Hey everyone, this video is all about debugging the JavaScript code using Chrome Developer Tools. So I am going to show you a number of ways in which you can leverage the functionality of powerful Chrome DevTools in debugging your JavaScript code. So without wasting any more time, let's begin with the first one. The easiest and the straightforward way to break the JavaScript code execution at any point is to place the debugger keyword over there. The Chrome DevTools will stop the code execution and then you can do a bunch of stuff with the information available to you in different panels. So in this JavaScript code, there are three functions and if I were to place a debugger keyword over here and when I will run the code, then what will happen is when the code will run and if the Chrome DevTools are opened, then the code execution will break at this point and I can observe what is going on with all of these variables and statements. Also, I am using Visual Studio Code and this is the live server extension which is live reloading this web page whenever I am saving the changes. So when the changes were saved and the page was refreshed, then you can see that the code execution has stopped at the point where I have placed the debugger. The DevTools is showing the values for the variables which are inside this function's scope. Unfortunately, the debugger keyword cannot be removed at runtime in the Chrome DevTools and you will have to remove it from the code in order for your JavaScript to run uninterruptedly. So this debugger cannot be removed from over here. If you want to remove it, then we will have to again go into the source code and then delete this debugger from over here. That is where we come to point number two, which is using breakpoints in Chrome DevTools instead of using the debugger keyword. We can apply and remove debugging breakpoints by simply clicking on the left bar where there are line numbers against the line of code in question. Any breakpoint added this way also shows up in the right pane which is titled as breakpoints. From here, the breakpoints can be activated or deactivated without removing them entirely. So right now, this breakpoint is activated on line number 15 and when I will refresh this page, then you can see that the code execution has stopped at this point. I can then deactivate this breakpoint so if I will refresh the page again then the breakpoint is there but it is deactivated so the code execution has not stopped at this line so the program will continue its execution. Next up is adding watches. So watching a field or an object's value is a must when we are debugging in any language. In Chrome DevTools we can add any piece of code to the watch pane on the right. The piece of code which is placed in the watch pane will execute and if it's a field then its value will be displayed on its right, otherwise any return value will be shown. Placing watches is very helpful in evaluating any fields or any expression's value. They can also be used to dynamically execute pieces of code. So there is our breakpoint at line 15 and if I were to refresh this page then the code execution will stop where the breakpoint is. What I can do is I can add watches for any value over here like if I want to watch this x's value then I simply have to select it and then right click on it and then select this add selected text to watches. When I will click on it then x will be added to the watch. If the value of x will be changed from the code then the value will be updated over here too and we can set the value of x in the watch pane too. To do that what we can do is we can add a new watch expression by right clicking on this pane and then we can simply set or change x's value so when I will execute this expression x equals to 15 then x's value will be changed. To see if it has been changed then I will simply press F10 and you can see that the value of x is now updated in the watch pane in the first position and if I will check the console then you can see that 30 is printed over here because both x and y have value 15. So in this way the watch pane can be used to either watch any fields value or to execute single line expressions. Next is tracking code calls using the stack trace. The call stack pane on the right can be used to see the stack trace of the current piece of code which is in execution. This is very helpful in finding out from where the current execution context has been called right up to its very source. So in this code what I will do is I will simply place a breakpoint in function 3 which is being called from function 2 and eventually it is being called from function 1. So the code execution should stop at this breakpoint when I will refresh this page and surely it has stopped. 
So in the call stack, you can see that function three is being called from function two and function two is being called from function one and so on. The function one is being called from an anonymous context, which is the scripts context. So in this way, the call stack pane can be used to view the stack trace of the current piece of code, which is in execution. And it is surely one of the most important functionality, which is used to debug our JavaScript code. Next up is a conditional breakpoint. So conditional breakpoints can be used to break code execution at the breakpoint when the associated condition is true. Otherwise, the breakpoint will act as though it has been deactivated. Conditional breakpoints are a great way to cut through the clutter of always breaking execution of iterative code and instead only break the execution when the execution context and state is such that it needs to be inspected to find any bugs. So in this function three, what I will do is I will add a loop over here and then when the loops iterations will be executing, then I will add a conditional breakpoint which will only break when the loops index is at a specific position. So this is our loop and what we will do is we will break the code execution when i's value is five. To do that, I am going to place a breakpoint over here at this line and then right click on it, click on edit breakpoint and then we will have to place an expression which will be checked before breaking the code execution over here at this breakpoint. So I am going to put the expression value as i double equals to five and then click outside. Now refresh the page again. And now you can see that the code execution has stopped when i's value is 5. When I will press the resume script execution button on the top, then the code will simply execute without breaking anymore because i's value will never be 5 again. So that's how we can use conditional breakpoints when we don't want to break the code execution every time the code line is being called and we can simply break the execution at any specific value of any field or when any other condition is true. Just like the conditional breakpoint, there is a log point which can be used to log messages to the console whenever the line where the log point has been placed is executed. So sometimes in a large project, we don't want to always break the code execution, but instead of that, we just want to track the code execution path from various different functions and possibly scripts. In that case, we can simply convert the breakpoint into a log point. The log points function is that it will log any message to console to indicate that the log point code line has been executed. We can differentiate between a breakpoint and a log point by simply looking at the color. The log point is orange in color similar to conditional breakpoint. So in this code execution, what we need to do is we just need to log whenever the functions are being called. So what I will do is I'm going to place three breakpoints in every function and then we will need to right click on it, click on edit breakpoint menu item and then select the log point instead of conditional breakpoint and then we can simply provide the message which we need to print. So function one is called and I'm just going to copy it. Similarly, we can edit the second one too and then convert it into a log point and then provide the message which is function two is called. And now it's time for the third one, convert to log point function three is called and now let's refresh the page again check out the console so there you can see function one is called and then there is 25 which is the sum of the variables x and y being printed and then there is the message function two is called and then there is the another message which is being printed after this second log point and then finally we have our function three is being called and then the numbers which are being printed from this loop again this loop is after this log point so this log point has been printed first there is another helpful feature of chrome dev tools which is they can prettify the compressed or minified javascript code so that we can easily understand the code logic and be able to place breakpoints at individual lines so in this web page which is of stackoverflow.com i'm just going to open up the 
jQuery code library which is minified over here and to prettify this jQuery code all I need to do is click on this button which is labeled as pretty print and when I will click on it then the minified jQuery code will be properly formatted and now we can easily understand any code logic which is written inside it maybe we can also debug it if we need to do that but if the javascript code is obfuscated or scrambled then even though the dev tools will prettify the javascript code the code will be very hard to read because all the methods and field names will be renamed lastly the chrome dev tools pane can be dogged at different positions or it can be undocked and be separated into a window to further increase the size of the browser window to do that all you need to do is click on these three vertical dots when you will click on it then the first item is the dock side which means the side where we need to dock this chrome devtools window so right now it is docked to bottom when i will click on this dock to left then it will be docked on the left side similarly we can dock it on the right side and we can also undock it into a separate window like this this is very helpful when we are using double monitors one monitor can have the chrome browser open and the other one can have the dev tools window open and this in turn will allow us to analyze a lot more content than usual so that is all that this video has to offer you guys do let me know what you think about it and if you have any questions then please use the comments area to ask them and i will make sure to reply to your questions if you think that you like this video and you find it interesting then please don't be shy and place a like on this video as well as subscribe to this channel along with pressing the bell icon doing that will make sure that you will be the first to know whenever any new video updates will come out on this channel so i will see you guys in the next video till then have a great day